Hello, my name is Myron Kent. I'm the National Director for the Kent Family Endowment Fund. We are sponsoring the Kent Academy of Arts and Crafts where we specialize in eggshell carving. Now, since we're nonprofit, we take donations. And the donations are to help our students buy the arts and crafts that they need to continue their work. I'm producing what I call a starter kit. That starter kit consists of a tool that we call a Dremel. Actually, this is a reproduced tool. It's not the actual Dremel, but we buy in quantity, so we have to buy at a reduced price, and because we take a donation, uh, <clears throat> instead of selling it directly, we have to ask for a certain amount. Now, along with this Dremel, I also have a training, training video that we have to send students for a donation of $65. You send in that donation of $65 and we will send you this kit. The address is P.O. Box 542, Esparto, California, 95627. That's again, that's P.O. Box 542, Esparto, California, 95627. Thank you. <clears throat>
Christian ministry, and I felt well. I uh, I feel pretty confident that you know my love of God is is the same as any other Christians, but. Um, during my service in the Church of Christ, I noticed that we have three valuable teaching tools. The first being commandment, the second being example, and the third being necessary inference. I won't go into detail about that, but this is how I came across the book that I'm going to read to you. And uh, I'm going to read the uh, going to read the credits and everything. <clears throat> the The cover says why I am a member of the Church of Christ, and it's by Leroy Brownlow. B R O W N L O W. And here's the forward. But sanctify in your heart Christ as Lord, being ready always to give answer to every man that asketh you a reason concerning the hope that is in you, yet with meek with meek I can't understand that word. Oh, with meekness and fear. The writer, this is Mr. Brownlow, believing this exhortation and at the request of many in various localities who have heard him preach a series of sermons on this topic, presents to the public this volume of scriptural reasons for being a member of the Church of Christ. Okay, that's just a portion. I I can't I can't read the whole forward. <clears throat> but here's the contents. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it was founded by the scriptural builder Jesus Christ. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it was founded on the scriptural Foundation, let the Bible speak where the Bible speaks, and be silent where the Bible is silent. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it was founded <clears throat> at the scriptural time, the Pentecost following the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, we all know that the New Testament church didn't come into um, the kingdom of God until after Jesus had risen and sent back the Holy Spirit. And this is what inspired men to go and to preach the whole gospel or basically if you're asked what the gospel is, just say it's the story of Christ. You don't have to go into a long dissertation on, you know, uh, evangelizing or missionary or going into the highways and byways. And it's just simply the story of Christ. I am a member of the Church of Christ because Christ is the founder of only one church. The church. Read it in Ephesians. Because I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it is scriptural in name. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it is scriptural in organization. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it was the Bible as its only creed, confession of faith, and church manual. We follow the Bible. Okay? 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Did you know that the Bible contains thus saith the Lord at least 2,000 times? I mean, you can pay attention to God's repeatable. You'll understand. I'm telling you, folks. No one comes to God except through Christ. And that's scriptural. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because the Church of Christ believes the Bible is a book to be rightly divided. Rightly divided, the word of truth, is first forming the love of Christ in your heart, okay? But you don't stick to that emotional connection. Initially, you respond to it by asking the question like they did on the day of Pentecost. What must we do to be saved? And Peter's answer was, be baptized, all of you, in the name of the Lord, for the remission of sin, therefore you will be saved. Okay? But, see, you develop Christ in your mind by Scripture, by understanding, thus saith the Lord. Um, my favorite teacher, Dr. Gene Scott, who's going on to be with the Lord, he used to give us a simple acrostics, and he called it the ABC of faith. Now, that's not defining faith, but you just put down ABC, A being an action, B by believing, and C, sustained by confidence. So you have action based on belief, sustained by confidence. And where do we sustain our confidence? We sustain it by thus saith the word of the Lord. You, you, can't, you can't go anywhere else. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it is undenominational. Now, to denominate is to separate. And Christians that call themselves Christians who are in a denomination who actually follow denominational theology have separated themselves from the Christian community. No, no, way, no way around it. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it is scriptural in doing missionary work. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it teaches the kingdom has been established and Christ is now reigning. See, we're in the kingdom. We're in the kingdom of God right now. How? Because we followed scriptural basis for being baptized, for going into that watery grave, coming out of that watery grave, to walk in newness of life, to receive the Holy Spirit, and to be added to the body of Christ, of which Jesus is the head. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it gives scriptural answers to the question, what must I do to be saved? I already, I already said that, but I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it teaches that man is saved by faith, but not faith alone. So I was talking about the emotional connection. The emotional connection comes in when we repent. And that isn't getting all wishy-washy and, oh, I'm so sorry, what do I do? No. It's simply changing your mind. Right, it's changing your mind and direction. You finally decide, after hearing the Word of God, you finally decide, 
I must be going the wrong way. You know, I, I got to go toward Jesus Christ. I have to find Jesus Christ, who is head of the church, to lead and to follow me. I mean, to lead and to follow. And this is how we established the Lord, the Word, and faith by action. Okay? Uh, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it says, They won't care about it. They won't ask the questions. They'll just go on with a meaning, meaningless life and depart this earth uh, to go wherever God sends them. I can't say a person's going to go to hell. That's not my decision because it's up to God to separate the chaff from the wheat. It's not up to me. I have to do the best I can. Like Confucius says, don't ask me about the afterlife. I'm having enough problems with this life. So I can't say somebody's going to hell. That's, that's not... It's not my decision. It's God's decision. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it teaches that infants and infants are born pure and innocent rather than depraved. Now they may be born into sin, okay? We don't sin because sin's available. We sin because we're sinners. It's in our compulsive nature. You know? Every once in a while, sin will overtake us. And, you know, <laughs> what happened? You know? You get all bright-eyed bright, bright -eyed and, gee. You know, it, it just happened. I didn't intend it. Well, intention or no intention. If a man knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's a sin. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it teaches that the miraculous manifestation of the Spirit have ceased. Now, this is this is the teaching that the Restoration Movement teaches concerning the laying on of hands and miracles. We're looking for the most wonderful miracle in the world and that's to meet Jesus safe, face to face and have Jesus tell us welcome in thou good and faithful servant that's every goal that's the hope that lies within all Christians who have been saved through baptism by receiving the Holy Spirit and being added to the church that's a Christian anyone who just believes and receives without being baptized, you know, is possibly believing a lie to their eternal damnation. And you be careful of that. If you truly believe that God is and he diligently rewards those who seek him, then you have to pay attention to what Scripture says. You have to be baptized scripturally. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because of scriptural teaching and observations of the Lord's Supper. And that isn't, that isn't some deacon standing up there at the table telling you to examine yourself. You take unworthily, you're in trouble. No. The word unworthily is not discerning the body and blood of Christ. It's, a, it's an adverb. It modifies the actor, not the action. You examine yourself so that your focus is on the body and blood in remembering Jesus Christ. The word in the Greek is amnesis. Sounds like amnesia, but it isn't has anything to do with forgetting. It's remembering Christ with love and affection, thanking God for his mercy.
I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it has scriptural music in the worship. Now you're thinking right away, what? The, the, the non-instrumental churches of Christ don't have music. Well, yes, we do. We make merry and we sing within our hearts. We sing with this God-given instrument that teaches us to sing psalms and pray as a sacrifice, uh, like a sin offering that's well-pleasing to the Lord. It, I don't like, you know, David, King David said, make a joyful noise as unto the Lord. Well, what? It's not a, it's a joyful noise to us because most of us don't know how to sing. Like, you know, the American Idol. Well, but we make a joyful noise and we make the sound within our hearts. And it